approaching the archipelago of Svalbard in Norway's far north, a region where the frontier spirit is still very much alive. Its biggest town, Longyearbyen, is often called the northernmost settlement on Earth. But even here, people feel the fallout of from the war in Ukraine. Ronnie Brunfel is the head of Visit Svalbard, the local tourism board. Before the war, they worked together with the Russian community up here, offering tours to their nearby settlements. Now all connections have been severed. It has been such a tight relationship between people and between uh, companies. So when it all burst out in, in February 2022, of course it was a, a tense situation in Longyearbyen as well, amongst the companies. We visit Arild Olsen Longyearbyen's mayor. It's a small community with members from many parts of the world. Svalbard is part of Norway, but under a treaty signed in 1920, Russians as well as other nations have the right to live and work here. For many decades that went well. But now Olsen fears Russia's war on Ukraine could lead to conflicts here too. One reason, he says, is that many residents of the Russian settlements promote the Kremlin's propaganda. I see the same things that comes from the official Kreml, also comes from the official Barnesburg. Uh, same, same, but different. And I see this uh, same propaganda machinery uh, going on in, in Barnesburg as, as in uh, Kreml. For example, on May 9th, residents of the Russian settlement of Barnesburg staged a military-style victory parade. Such actions on Norwegian soil are seen as a provocation by many locals. We decide to travel over to Barentsburg to get the full picture. In summer, the only way to get there from Longyearbyen is by boat. Barentsburg, with its coal mine and tourism industry, is completely owned and managed by the Russian state company Trust Arctic Ugol. Ruslan Safin works for the company just like everyone here. He tells us how life has changed in the settlements and sanctions were imposed on Russia. When they introduced sanctions, nobody thought about places like Spitsbergen. I thought it was stupid. Why? Because this is a very special place, that is, including logistics and delivery. If all borders are blocked, supplies are stopped, then there may simply be an environmental disaster. And those opponents, they do not think about it, not predicting the further development of the situation. They say they still have good relations with the other nations present in Svalbard, that nothing has changed since the start of the war in Ukraine. But we also hear that fewer tourists are visiting and that getting supplies or certain goods is a problem. Still, most people we speak to, including the head of the local school, point out they are happy to live here in Norway's far north after all. There are no tough conflicts or confrontations here. I believe that people have different points of view. Their understanding of events is different. But no one has arguments with the others. Everyone understands that we are all together on this island. You cannot just leave. You have to somehow find common ground. At a concert in honor of the local mine workers, though, the patriotic Russian overtones can give a different impression. The Arctic, with its resources and new maritime routes, is crucial for the Kremlin as it tries to expand its influence here. Russia wants to invest more money in new research projects and tourism. But right now, Barentsburg is quite isolated. Some workers have left. Back in Longyearbyen, we meet up with one of them. Daria Arnautova is from eastern Ukraine. She left the Russian settlement after 10 years, when the war in Ukraine started. She says she could not live there anymore. From the very beginning, there were many people from Ukraine who supported Ukraine. 
And they, just like us, terminated their contracts and started leaving. But there were also a lot of people from Ukraine, from the self-proclaimed republics in Donetsk and Lugansk, and they support Russia. The conflict lives on, Daria Arnatova says. With tensions rising in the high north, the war in Ukraine has consequences in regions the Kremlin might not have foreseen.